Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd D20. Uh, today we are going to be taking a look at just D20s uh, from a very particular company. These are some D20s that I picked up from Game Science. Uh, a lot of you might be familiar with them. They're known for making precision dice. Um, if you take a look at these, you can see the edges are super sharp cut as compared to uh, most D20s, and that is ostensibly supposed to help them roll more randomly. Um, I saw a report uh, with someone who did a scientific test. I think they did like a thousand rolls or something with uh, a D20 from Game Science and then like a Chessex one. And they didn't see a huge difference. The Game Science ones did kind of have the edge in randomness, but it wasn't a big thing. Um, I think for most people, it's just aesthetically that they like these. I know that's that's how I got a hold of them. Uh, matter of fact, a little story. I started off with just these two. Uh, my local game store has a tray or it's a shelf full of little drawers of just random dice that you can buy individually. And I saw these two sitting in here before I even knew about game science. And I just liked how they looked. So I picked them up, found out who makes them, and then I ordered these back here. Uh, all of them except for one is from what they call their gem line. So it's, um, you know, translucent like a gemstone would be. I think this one's called their aquamarine. This one is their sapphire. This one here is their amethyst, which I find particularly cool. And it's interesting because I'm not a huge fan of purple, but I really like this one. Um, this one is called laser red, which on camera looks kind of orange, but in person it's almost more of a, like a neon pink. So... I don't know that I like this one a whole lot. The one that I really wanted um, was called Ruby, and it's a dark red, kind of like this one's a dark blue, but they seem to be out of stock pretty much everywhere. This one is just a solid standard black D20. This one is their Smoke, they call it. And then this one is Glow in the Dark. Um, it's kind of a traditional glow-in-the-dark, so if any of you saw the video I put out for the Luminary Sky set from Chessex, um, this one's not quite that cool, but it's neat because it's glow-in-the-dark. So, the things that I kind of have issue with on these, uh, just a couple, is if you look at any of them, because apparently this is like this on all of them, if we find the number 7 which this is not a spin, there we go. So it's not a spin down, so good luck. Um, you can see there is a little imperfection here, a little piece of remaining plastic sprue. Um, and that's on all of them. So I'm not quite sure how something that has blemishes on all of them can be said to roll better than other dice. I mean, in the end, it's not a, it's not a deal breaker or anything. It's just a little interesting. Um, next thing is they come to you uninked. You can have Game Science do it for you, but I believe it's like an extra $2 per die, something like that. So I thought I'd do them myself. Um, I did this one first, and this is just kind of my, I learned my lesson, you know, don't do this again die. If you look on here, the surface seems kind of hazy and, and roughed up. And what that was is I filled this in with silver nail polish and then I used what on the bottle said non-acetone nail polish remover and some Q-tips to just lightly buff off the excess and leave the filling in there. Uh, I've done that on various different sorts of projects in the past. Um, any sort of metal surfaces with like words engraved, you can typically do that and it's not gonna hurt it, but that nail polish remover did not like this. So you can see the numbers are kind of rough. I just didn't want to mess with this one anymore. Um, so the next thing I'd heard was that you can fill these in with crayon and that the original D&D dice or the D&D sets came with a white crayon to fill in your dice. So I tried that on all of these um, and I watched a bunch of reviews online that said, oh, it's easy, it takes five minutes and you're done. These took me about half an hour a piece, maybe even a little longer for the first couple that I did, because I could not get the crayon to stick. It just either wouldn't go into the grooves, or it 
built up too much and pulled out when I was trying to fill in another spot on it. And apparently that could have been from there's some sort of residue that they say you're supposed to wash off first before you fill in the numbers. Um, some sort of anti-stick coating that helps them not get jammed up in the molds. But I didn't do that ahead of time and I really didn't like how the dice looked after I had filled them in. So I made the solution that they said, you know, hot water and Dawn, some kind of dish soap that'll take off grease. Washed them out and then I just left them because I'm not sure what I want to do with these yet. Now this one is kind of the exception because after I washed it, I realized that I had my set of uh, Pigma Micron pens that I use for sketching, inking, and maps, various things. And the one that's the .005, the, the very fine tip one, filled this in perfectly with no effort. There was no bleeding out of the surface and it's, it's great. Problem is, most of these black ink won't show up. Obviously not gonna show up here or here. Um, not gonna show up too well here or here. And this one, I just don't know what I wanna do with it yet. Um, but as far as how they roll, they have a pleasant sound to them. They've got a good weight. And I really do like their dice. I plan to said, when the, when the Ruby ones get back in stock, I plan on buying at least one of those. Uh, no matter what, even with the few cons that I've noticed on these, I definitely really like them. You might have to take a nail file or some sort of file device and knock down the, the little sprue remains on some of these. Most of them aren't too bad, but I think two of them, the amethyst one and I believe the black one, uh, it was enough that it stuck up and actually interfered with the dice roll, so I had to file those down. Not a big deal, though. So, you can get these sometimes at your local game store, um, and you guys know that I always advocate shopping at your local game store when you can. Um, helps a local business, gives us nerds a place to play and pick up supplies, but I haven't seen a lot of these in stores. So if you just go to gamescience.com, you can take a look at their whole product line. Some of their stuff doesn't even have images with it. It's a pretty archaic looking website, but it gets the job done. And that's where I got all of these, except for those two. Uh, that's about all I have to say on them, guys. Uh, I really appreciate you watching the video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you don't. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, hit me up in the comments and I will do everything I can to get back to you guys. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.